Well, again, just really um, excited about uh, um, our recruiting class and um, getting those kids signed on National Signing Day. Three great kids and impact players that are going to be great Longhorns. So really, uh, you know, that coupled with our way we played on Wednesday night, uh, Wednesday was a pretty good day. So um, just trying to – we gave the kids yesterday off. Today will be a big day for us today and tomorrow um, before we play on Sunday against a really good Liberty team. Uh, known Kerry Green a long time. He does a great job. They're, they're probably one of the premier uh, mid-major programs in the country. Um, they're constantly in postseason, whether it's the NCAA tournament or NIT. But Kerry is a tremendous coach. Staff does a great job. Kids play really well. Uh, watched a lot of film on them. Uh, they'll play tonight over at Stephen F. Austin. But um, you know we're 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 gonna we're gonna go against a really smart team and and really skilled team uh, on Sunday. So, but I was really pleased again with how we played on on Wednesday night, and uh, you know just trying to. Trying to get some kids healthy right now with with Amo and and uh, Aaliyah Moore, and uh, that's just a daily process. Uh, and then and uh, Deanna. So we're no we're nowhere. Nothing's different with those kids today than it was yesterday or the day before. But it's just an ongoing process every day. But uh, excited about the opportunity. You guys want to go ahead and jump in. They're kind of going uh, – looking at your class, the last two classes, I think it's five different states you guys have recruited from or decided to recruit out of. I mean, do you have a specific recruiting map or a specific, you know, club circle you like to look at, or how do you kind of go about recruiting and kind of recruiting, recruiting the nation? Yeah, I think, you know, for us, Danny, it's always about a fit. Um, I can't tell you who we're after in the 26th class, but – I mean, the 25 class, but you could ask the same question with that one, too. So, you know, it's all about recruiting to a fit for us. Um, and, you know, I think the brand that is the University of Texas allows us to go anywhere and really in the in the world to re recruit. Um, and so uh, I think once you get kids to campus, it's just, you know, it's an eye opener for them there. It, it, it's really uh, the city and, and our campus is so pretty and the people here. I mean, it's really a team effort when you start talking about recruiting and, and how we get it done. But so much credit has to go to our, our my staff uh, with with Elena and Blair and Wiz. They have worked tirelessly and uh, um, continue to put us in position to recruit these, you know, top top kids in the country. So – the method to the madness, if you're asking, is really it's it's that recruiting to a fit. It, it just and it doesn't matter where you're from or you know uh, who you play for. It's it's more about do you fit what we're doing here from a cultural standpoint, from a um, an athletic skill set standpoint. Uh, all those things play into it. Kind of follow up quickly quickly on that. I mean, obviously Blair and. Um, Elena, I've been with you for a while and kind of know this culture and know what you like, but how does Lindsay kind of fit in, fit into that and adapting into this culture and knowing what you want to recruit? Yeah, she's, you know, I took, <laughs> as you know, it took a long time finding that, that right, you know, right coach to come in and, and she came in really late last year or, you know, right when the school season school started. So I think she got off the plane at, at Austin Bergstrom and got on the, the the private plane with us and we flew to get Booker, you know, and uh do an in home there. So that was her first day uh here on the 48 acres. So uh she's just been a really good fit. I mean she's she's uh from a from my staff perspective, she just again it's uh for me I, I don't micromanage. I need people to be able to do their job and uh you know um personality wise uh, character wise i mean she just she fits right in so it's it's been great and um again her, her contacts you know where she's been at purdue and wisconsin and boston college might be different than than some of our contacts so it's you know it's it's, it's kind of just that 
that uh, we all we all have a uh, a reach and we all have our our tentacles or however you want to put it and our contacts. But I just think all of our our staff we're able to communicate with anybody and everybody, no matter what part of the country they're in. Hey, Vic, Gisela's path, uh, you know, a little unorthodox, but obviously to get the rehab with with your staff. And as much as that, Vic, how about just being around the team last year and, and what that meant to her growth as a true freshman? She's kind of a seasoned true freshman. Yeah, she's seen a lot, you know, not done very much, but she's certainly seen it and uh, knows what it looks like. Um, and that 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 does have value. I mean, that's why we – one of the reasons why being here early was so good for her, not just from a physical standpoint, but also from the mental standpoint of of knowing what we're going to do and, and how we do it. So, uh, you know, Roger, she's still, still a long way, in my opinion, from being back to her old self. And yet she was pretty functional the other night. Uh, I think conditioning still plays a part with her. And, and um, but she's getting there. She's made some big strides here lately. And I'm going to tell you, her shot, she's got a beautiful shot. And, uh, you know, obviously the other night may went three for five from three. If we don't have her, we went three for 19 out there. You know, with her, we went six for 22. So, um, you know, just, uh, she really, I think she's going to bring a lot to the table. And, uh, you know, whether she's playing a little bit at the one and spelling Rory or I got Booker spelling Rory and she's playing at the two, you know, people will have to think twice about zoning us because I think she's going to be able to make some shots for us. Yeah, I wanted to ask about Madison because <clears throat> she's done so much already, but she hadn't played in a college basketball game that counted until uh, this week. How big uh, was that for her just to, all right, that one's out of the way, let's let's kind of move on. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, you know, uh, you only have one first college game, right? And uh, hers was pretty good. Seven assists, seven rebounds. Um, you had a couple steals. So, um, and as I joked with her, she didn't foul out, you know. Uh, uh, so, foul trouble, uh, she's got to, you know, just like most freshmen, you got to learn, you know, from that. So, um I think everybody in the gym saw what a great passer, how she sees the floor. I mean, she's really special in that regard. And I think her size allows her to be good at that. You know, she's she's a big old guard that can just do a lot of things. So, you know, that kid is uh, – she's just exciting to watch. She's exciting to coach. She's a great kid. She gobbles up everything. Um, she just has a great demeanor about her. So, and you talk about a competitor now. She is a competitor. So. It's maybe the wrong way of phrasing this, but, you know, during these early season matches, do you really care about Southern or Liberty? Are you preparing the same way for those teams as you would, would a conference foe, or is this more about let's figure out our stuff, let's figure out our rotations, work on the stuff we need to work on? Is that more important that in this part of the schedule? Yeah, you know, um, Great question, and the answer is we we prepare, we prepare for each team for what they are and, and what they do. And, uh, you know, um, everybody's different. Everybody plays differently. And um, and so um, each team demands a, a certain focus in certain areas, if that makes sense. So uh, certainly what we do is important. You know, uh, I am concerned about what we're doing and, and, my, and ourselves, but – just like we'll do with every conference team, we'll go through what they do offensively. We'll we'll prepare two days uh, in getting ready for their sets and what they want to do and how they want to attack us, um, so that when our kids get on the floor, they know how to defend certain actions. I thought, Danny, that was something we really did a nice job of against Southern. Um, we took them out of everything they wanted to do, and um, and then when they tried to break us down. You've seen it before with my teams. We didn't foul them. We've had teams in the past that put that same Southern team on the line 30 times. We we contested without fouling. And I think with our length and our athleticism, our speed and quickness, it's it's what, what allow, you know, it's, it could be something that's going to allow us to be really good uh, defensively. So, um, you know, we held them three quarters in single digits. The fourth quarter, we, we had some subs in and different 
combinations and they scored 12 points. But I was really pleased with our intentionality defensively. I thought we were very intentional and really focused on that end. So, yeah, we we, we prepare for everybody, respect everybody um, and what they're capable of doing, and, and we try to prepare in that regard. You kind of see this team as, you know, you had your – starting lineup that you use in the Southern game, but do you see this team as a team that you may have a different lineup each week? Cause you guys have a lot of depth. You guys have a lot of versatility or do you kind of want to have the same starting lineup and maybe mix and match during, during the games? I, I think um, that's to be determined. Uh, I think we can easily start, you know, Hattie or Taylor, um, you know, the problem that Amo and Deanna are going to have when they get healthy is that Amina's is playing really well. And I told you all the other night, Amina is a unique um, – she's just unique in what she's able to bring to the table for us. She's a better on-ball defender than everybody but Rory, which means she's a better on-ball defender than Deanna and, and Amo. Um, she's added – you know, she's added some face-up to her game. Um, you know, it, it – it, 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 it's really going to be, you know, it's going to be cha a challenge for me to figure out, you know, those kids, um, you know, that's a three headed monster right there that, um, you know, on certain nights, yeah, I guess you go with whoever's hot. Right. But, you know, Dion obviously is coming off of an all big 12 first team, all big 12 season and, and um, was playing really well before she got hurt. And offensively, she's probably from a, you know, offensive standpoint, um, she's probably better offensively uh, of the three. But at the same time, I mean, you know, Amo obviously brings something to the table, a veteran um, that that does some things that that the others don't. So I, I think it's it's a big challenge for sure at that position. But those kids should be competing every day. And, um, and, and what it allows us to do is depending on matchups, That'll determine on probably who plays and who plays a lot. But when you when you, you don't have and that's what we addressed in our recruiting class. When you don't have that second perimeter defender that you really need, you know, Amina can match up there for you. You could easily slide Booker over to a four player if you want, wanted to, and and uh, put Amina out there on a second great wing defend, you know, wing player, and um, you know, I. I thought she did a really good job on Juju Watkins in the USC scrimmage. Um, and the other night she was really good uh, defending their four player who had gone five for seven from three against Baylor. She really took that away from that kid. So, um, you know, that position should have lots of competition. Hey, Vic, I'm going to ask you the old, as an opposing coach with someone like Amina, is she kind of your worst nightmare? Cause you just don't know as an opposing coach, she does so many things. Things, runs the floor she's long uh she defends and and kind of you, you know the scouting reports kind of all over the place with her I mean you know what a spot up shooter is going to do you know what a post player is going to do but kind of that x factor well I think what separated her the other night Roger that was so exciting for us is she played really hard like she was the energizer bunny out there you know she she made a bunch of she went and got a bunch of rebounds you know I think she had double she had double double at halftime but she put herself in a position to get rebounds and she was pursuing the basketball. And so when you can get them to, you know, when you get them to play that hard and do that, it, it is a problem for opposing coaches because you now you got to put somebody on, on her. That's, you know, it's not necessarily you're worried about certain things that maybe, uh, you know, off, you know, offensively, but you've got to worry about her when the shot goes up, you better find her and put a butt on her. And, I think she took a took film. We showed her what, what she did in the first scrimmage. She took that coaching and she went and fixed it in the second, you know, in the in the next one, which was our opening night. So you always like to see coach, you know, kids take coaching and then go apply it and, and do some things. And I thought she did that. Vic, with a Veterans Day, um coming up i'm kind of wondering um obviously your dad served and kind of wondering your upbringing and you know him what did that kind of how that kind of shape your, you as a coach and kind of how you handle your business yeah I, I have so much admiration and respect 
for my father, uh, seeing him as a, as a, as a kid, as a child, as an adult, knowing what this country meant to him, um, knowing what the flag meant to him. Let me tell y'all something. There is nothing more honorable and humbling at the same time than having a soldier kneel at your mother's chair with a flag in their arms and tell your mother on behalf of the president of the United States that they appreciate the service your father gave to his country. I mean, I still hear that 21 gun salute at his military funeral. Um, but just what he stood for as a man, as a father, as a husband, you know, he went and fought one of the absolute worst people in all the history of our world. Somebody that executed and murdered millions. Right. And he went and fought that guy on his, on his, you know, over there. Uh, he used to tell me, son, I got my degree in one hand and got on the boat in the other, you know, and, and went to Germany. Um, and so, uh, you know, just the structure and the discipline we had in our house, yet the love that we had in our house, you know, the greatest form of love is discipline. And I still try to convey that to my own players today and let them know that, while it's not something that I like, I'm certainly, it's part of my job and I have to do it. It was part of his job as my father. Um, and that's, I think that's what I respect and admire so much about my mother and father was that God blessed them with, with a child and they were going to do what, what in their mind you're supposed to do as a mother and father, when you're being, when you've been blessed with a child, you have an, a responsibility to raise that child and to put them in the best position they can be to, to be successful and be right, do right. And I think that's where my, my, my family and specifically my father um, were. And, and yet it was all out of love. And uh, we had such a, you know, a great family. And uh, um, so it is a, it is a day that I know my father, um, um, respected and admired and, and held in high esteem. And again, I, I, I do as well, just because I know of his love for country and, um, you know, you don't hear that in today's world, love of country. You, you, and, it, and yet if somebody's to say that, well, what, what are we doing? You know, well, he did the ultimate I and mean, he went over there and fought an absolute, you know, horrible person to make sure that we have the very freedom that we have today. But not only that, he went over there and fought somebody to make somebody else's life over there better that we as Americans, we don't even know those folks, but we just did it because it's the right thing to do. That's what America's always been about. For the most part in my life was we, we stood up when somebody wanted to be a bully somewhere. And I think Danny, we've lost that i think it's evident we've lost that right now in our country haven't we but in the old days we didn't allow it and uh and so anyway i appreciate that that question because obviously he's really special to me any other questions for coach man i appreciate y'all so much uh, appreciate your coverage of our kids. Thanks for the newspaper article today um, about our recruiting class. And uh, um, this will be a fun team for you to cover, I hope. So uh, y'all have a great day. Thank you.